Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it plans to commence its deposit return scheme on the 1st of March 2024. Minister Lorna Slater. Due to the 11th hour intervention by the UK Government to change the parameters of Scotland's deposit return scheme, both to remove glass from the scheme and to add significant uncertainty around essential parts of the scheme, for example, the 20 pence deposit and the costs to producers and fees for retailers. It is clear that Scotland's deposit return scheme in the scope and form passed by this Parliament cannot go ahead as currently planned. Over the last 10 days and right now, we are urgently establishing to what extent there is a way forward for a modified scheme, its scope, terms and timescales. That crucially depends on whether the UK Government can provide timely, stable and reliable assurances on basic operational matters such as trading standards, the 20 pence deposit and producer fees. It also depends on to what extent there is industry support for an alternative scheme. I am writing to the UK Government today to ask for an urgent discussion about these conditions. I will update Parliament at the earliest opportunity with the outcome of these actions and what that means for Scotland's deposit return scheme going forward. Liam Kerr. I'm not sure that the Parliament heard an answer specifically on the 1st of March 2024, but in any event, the Minister mentioned glass. Now, Circularity Scotland, the scheme administrator, says that they believe the scheme is viable to launch without glass. But the First Minister claims that removing glass threatens the viability of the scheme. They can't both be right, so who doesn't know what they're talking about? The First Minister or CSL? Minister. Uh, the member and certainly the Conservatives are on very shugly ground when discussing glass, given that Rishi Sunak, Alistair Jack and their own Douglas Ross stood on a manifesto to put in place a deposit return scheme with glass. Not only is the, are the UK Tories undermining our scheme with glass, but they are, it looks like they're doing the same thing to Wales as well. Glass is one of the three main materials used to make single-use drinks containers and accounts for more than a quarter of the containers. It doesn't make the same amount of uh, business case to run a system without glass than one is. It undermines the fundamental point of deposit return, which is the environmental and litter benefits. Even the UK government's own analysis of deposit return schemes across the UK showed that social benefits of reduced litter, emissions saved and the economy are increased by 64% when glass is included. It is England that is the outlier here by removing glass from a bottle return scheme. We have much interest. I'd be grateful for concise questions and responses. Liam Kerr. We didn't hear much in that response. I think the, the implication is that the minister thinks that CSL doesn't know what it's talking about in that answer on glass. But in fact, that answer was instructive because over the past week, the SNP Green Coalition has gone from mess to meltdown on deposit return. They've threatened to scrap it. They've tried to pick a fight with the UK government and they've been caught misrepresenting one of Scotland's leading drinks producers. So can the minister tell us why does she think that division and conflict will be more productive in rescuing her scheme than collaboration and cooperation? Minister. I, I must absolutely highlight to the member and this chamber some of the misrepresentation we've been hearing from particularly the Secretary of State for Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. His accusation that glass would be used for aggregate is completely untrue and demonstrates a complete lack of understanding in how deposit return scheme operates or indeed how our wider recycling legislation operates. The misrepresentation from Alistair Jack on the process agreed, on adhering to common frameworks, the lack of timeliness with decisions on VAT, on trading standards, show that the UK is not acting with good faith here to support Scotland's scheme going forward and is in fact doing everything possible to undermine it. Now myself and Circularity Scotland are looking at how we can take an alternative scheme forward in Scotland because the one that this Parliament passed has been shot down by Westminster. We were looking at an alternative scheme and I will report back to Parliament as soon as I possibly can on what that alternative may be. Clear Adamson. Thank you, Sir. The UK Government has shown nothing but contempt for the Scottish Parliament in using the Internal Market Act to effectively rewrite devolved laws. As Professor Aileen McCarg has alluded, there is nothing in the Internal Market Act, nothing that makes Alistair Jack the arbiter of what goes forward. This should have been done through the common frameworks. 
And as a result of the UK Government's misguided intervention and in U-turn, can the Cabinet Secretary say how much investment from Scottish business has been lost? Minister. Hundreds of millions of pounds of investment to prepare for the launch of the deposit return scheme across a range of businesses is now at risk, unless as a result of the UK Government's 11th hour intervention in our, in our deposit return scheme. The exact figures on investment are held by industry themselves, but published estimates suggest that retailers will invest up to £200 million and producers have invested around £100 million for the scheme. Alongside this, contractors to Circularity Scotland, such as BIFA, will have invested significant funds, with some estimating this at around £80 million. Mercedes Vialba. Uh, the Minister will be aware that Site Scotland has concerns on how blind and partially sighted people will be able to access and take part in the deposit return scheme. Just last week, Site Scotland received a letter from the Minister's officials, but that failed to address the issues that they raised. So will the Minister take the concerns of Site Scotland and others seriously and use the delay to the deposit return scheme to ensure that blind and partially sighted people are able to take part in the scheme? Minister. I thank the member very much for that question. Of course, any deposit return scheme must be accessible to every single person in Scotland, and that's true no matter whether they have disabilities or other impediments uh, to make that more of a challenge. So in terms of, particularly for non-sighted people or people with difficulty with sight, the design of reverse vending machines absolutely is intended to take that into account, and the intention, as a, if a scheme is, is to go forward, is to work with retailers and handlers to understand how they can best support customers who are using a manual return point. I, I can refer the member to the equalities assessment that was undertaken as part of the uh, deposit return scheme legislation. Maurice Golden. Thank you, President Officer. Both the Minister and the First Minister have wreaked havoc on the deposit return scheme. So can the Minister tell us today when the missing gateway review will be published. Minister. Uh, the, the, here we go. Sorry, the, there have been a series of independent gateway reviews undertaken throughout the design of the deposit return scheme, with the most recent carried out in March. The Scottish Government is considering carefully the recommendations from this review and will share these and its response with the Net Zero Energy and Transport Committee soon. Gateway review teams normally speak to between 12 and 15 interviewees. For this latest review, reviewers spoke to 45 people, which included CSL, a range of producers, retailers, wholesalers, and hospitality representatives. Liam MacArthur. This is a shambles that's been years in the making. All last week and over the weekend, we heard threats from the Scottish Government that if the UK Government didn't back down, then DRS uh, would be dead in the water. The Scottish Government appears now to have backed down. So does the Minister believe this will add to the confusion and add to the loss of confidence in the proposals the Government are trying to bring forward? Minister. The Member will appreciate that the UK Government has now blocked the scheme as passed by this Parliament. The devolved powers of this Parliament were used in 2020 to legislate for a deposit return scheme. That's a scheme that included glass, a scheme that clearly set a 20 pence deposit and other uh, guidance to industry as to how this scheme was to be in interpreted. The UK government has used the Internal Market Act, some might say abused the Internal Market Act, to impose changes on this devolved matter. Changes at the, this very late stage in development of the deposit return scheme that we now have to properly assess. Our scheme, as this Parliament passed, cannot go forward. We know that that's the case. Is there an alternative scheme that can be made from the pieces that the UK Government has left us? That is what we are rapidly assessing with business stakeholders and with Circularity Scotland. John Mason. Thank you. As I understand it, in Wales, Mark Drakeford is taking a very firm line and arguing that glass should be included in their scheme. Can the Minister explain why Scottish Labour are being so weak in this matter? Um, Indeed. On matters for which the yeah, Minister has general responsibility. There is no answer. Yeah. Minister, you can address the question to the extent where you, that you address matters for which the Scottish Government has general responsibility. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, Labour used to be a, a champion of devolution as an opportunity to address a democratic void in Scotland and to ensure that Scotland could strike out on its own path if the Scottish Parliament, elected by the people of Scotland, chose to do so. 
It is exactly what Labour in Wales are doing by designing their own DRS to include glass, because they too understand the environmental and economic benefits of doing so. Wales are at an earlier stage than we are in deposit return. They haven't yet passed their regulations. And once it comes to drafting their regs and doing the detailed design, Wales will very likely say, face the same barriers that we are now dealing with. Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Presenting Officer. Can I ask what would the impact would be on glass recycling, including non-scheme articles of rolling out separate curbside glass collection to those councils which currently do not have this service? Minister. Uh, the member will appreciate that the substantial change to deposit return as imposed upon us by the UK government not to include glass is something that we are doing the assessments on. We are trying to figure out whether the scheme is viable to go forward in Scotland, and that includes looking at how this impacts recycling rates. We know that curbside recycling rates tend to only get glass up to about 63%. Deposit return can get glass recycling up to 90%. That is a substantial reduction in broken glass litter and a substantial reduction in carbon emissions. That's why we know that including glass is a good idea. But of course, now that we cannot include glass in our scheme, we are going to have to undertake a detailed assessment. Sarah Boyack. Thank you, Presiding Officer. After the delays and grandstanding between the UK and Scottish Government, we deserve better than this. To get a viable DRS scheme, both the UK and the Scottish Government should get round the table as quickly as possible, especially given that Circularity Scotland today said the scheme could go ahead. Over the past two weeks, I've asked the Minister repeatedly, has she explored all the options? The Minister will be aware that over the weekend, I wrote to her urging to meet with GS1 UK, the only company in the UK that can provide globally recognised barcodes for profit. The Minister has failed to meet GS1 UK, a not-for-profit company who have a solution that could at least reduce the burdens on industry in delivering the scheme and at most change the conversation on the, international, on the internal market exemption. So will the Minister today commit to exploring every solution and meet with GS1 UK immediately so we can get a scheme that works? Minister. Uh, I have reassured the member repeatedly that we have looked at every possible option for carrying forward a scheme as passed by this Scottish Parliament. We know that that is not possible due to the limited exclusion passed under the Internal Market Act. I will be writing today to the Secretary of State to ask for an urgent meeting tomorrow to deal with the operational matters, to see if we can get the UK around the table to discuss these things. I'm not hopeful, given their track record, how long it took them to make a decision on VAT, that they still haven't made a decision on trading standards, and that they changed their own minds both on glass and on whether devolved nations should be able to set their own scope very late in the day. Uh, I can also remind the member that barcodes are not part of the regulations passed by the Scottish Parliament and are therefore not part of the legislation that we can consider here. The UK, because they have different powers, may include barcodes in their scheme, but we don't know because they haven't passed the regulations yet. So it, would, it wouldn't really help anything for me to discuss it with a barcode manufacturer. Graham Simpson. Thank you. Can the Minister confirm that she's drawing up a modified scheme without glass? And does she think that modified scheme could be up and running by March next year? Minister. The member will appreciate that removal of glass is a substantial change, and that question that he asks is what I am working through right now. I mean, the Conservatives are betraying their, betraying their own commitments on DRS because they see undermining Scottish Parliament as more important. But the, to decide whether we can go ahead with an alternate scheme without glass is a very substantial decision. So the First Minister and I will be meeting with industry representatives tomorrow. I am attempting to get a meeting with the UK Government urgently to decide whether that is feasible for us to go forward. And Mark Croskill. Last week, Labour's First Minister of Wales, Mark Drakeford, criticised the UK Government for reneging on a 2019 agreement that allowed Scotland and Wales to establish our own DRS schemes, which include glass. Westminster's Tory Government wants Wales and Scotland to wait for an English scheme. But can I ask the Minister, what assurances has she had that there will actually be a DRS scheme in England? When will it be up and running? And what the rules for interoperability actually will be? Minister. Uh, the member will appreciate that I am unable to answer that question because the UK government has not passed their regulations. They say a day of 2025, but we have not seen any sort of critical pathway to making that decision. They haven't got a scheme administrator in place. They haven't even determined whether their deposit will be 20p to match ours. So 
they can't even answer basic questions about interoperability. They say we have to adhere to their rules, but they haven't written the rules yet. Will the deposit be 20 pence? Will the producer fees change? We cannot answer that because the UK government has taken away our power to do so.